Hello everybody, welcome back to another InfoSec Operator tutorial. Sorry for my absence as of late. Uh, unfortunately, I've gotten caught up into doing a lot of things, uh, much more than I usually can handle. But anyways, welcome back to another tutorial. This is part one of Wi-Fi hacking. Now, the reason why I'm splitting it into multiple parts is so that way each of you get a full understanding. So if you're just looking for the lines of code, uh, you've come to the wrong YouTube channel and most especially the wrong video. Now I don't want each of you to become script kiddies. Um, that's actually the entire point of why I'm making these tutorials is because uh, script kiddies are horrible and uh, we we don't really like them very much but uh all right so in part one we're going to be learning how do we scan for Wi-Fi networks so that way we can attack them now most people would be like oh dude just you know throw it in monitor mode and you're good you know capture some data no um, I mean yeah but n there's a lot more to it than that so what I'm going to be showing each of you is uh, doing MAC address changes um, you know as we've seen in the previous tutorial you can change your MAC address to an already pre-existing MAC address and it's going to confuse systems and you can basically become that system essentially uh, and we're, but we're mainly going to focus on the error crack suite um, most of you have probably heard this and maybe played around with a little bit, but again, uh, I'm going to get into more detail. So before I continue, though, I do want to say this, that this these are going to become much more advanced hacking tutorials than what I've been showing. Uh, basically, all I've been showing is scanning and you know just basic um, poking and prodding around with some different protocols and stuff. This here is an actual attack that you could do damage to other people's systems, uh, specifically Wi-Fi and routers. Um, but once you get into that Wi-Fi and router, you could do, you know, stealing information, personal data, um, you know, IDs, things, all, all kinds of things. So what I want to say is that this tutorial is not so you can go and hack your neighbors or an airport or because technically you could after learning this but it is highly illegal and I am not responsible if you take the information that I teach each of you and use it for bad it is illegal there are huge punishments um, and consequences for doing such things but uh, if you have permission and you're getting into penetration testing, then this is going to be extraordinarily useful uh, so long as you have permission to do this. So without further ado though, let's go ahead, let's jump into uh, this part one tutorial. So the very first thing we need to do in order to hack Wi-Fi is, well, we need to discover Wi-Fi. Again, going back to that monitor mode, um, how do we get into monitor mode? Well, most of you may know this, or if you're newer to the advanced stuff, um, then you're going to want to type in airmon ng and we want to do a check kill. Okay, so uh, as you guys can see up here in the um, basically up here in the right corner right hand corner my Wi-Fi has disappeared now I'm simply just monitoring I'm not connected to the internet I'm not doing anything um, that requires TCP IP protocol UDP uh, all that fun stuff okay so then um, what we want to do is most of you will be in if you're using Wi-Fi in your house, most of you are going to be on a WLAN 0 uh, interface, but if not, then it would be ETH 0 if you're uh, using a cable, etc, etc. Now, 
what we want to do is we want to type in airmon again dash ng and we want to start our WLANO. So we're just monitoring now. Okay, again, up here in the right hand corner, we see that I did not connect back into the internet. Okay. And we see here um, we got interface WLAN0 mon, meaning monitor. Okay. And uh, we're using wireless network adapter because, again, this is a Wi Fi enabled. Uh, computer <laughs> so all right now let's get into the actual like what are we going to do in order so that way we can view um, different uh, networks and monitor those networks so excuse me I did not want to type in airmon because that's what we want to go into is aero dump dash ng again this is all one suite so we're just using different parts of that suite um, in order to, uh, you know, view things. All right, so error dump and dash ng mon. Oh, oh, I did not select the correct interface. Air mon, or my God, I am having trouble tonight, guys. Arrow dump ng dash ng and WLAN0 mon. So now what we are doing is we are scanning all the Wi-Fi networks that are within reach of our wireless network card. So we see a whole bunch over here on the right. Uh, we see that we can uh, we see the BSSID. So this is the MAC address of the router that we are wanting to target. Okay. Now, if you remember each, or if you, each of you remember, we talked about like MAC address changing and all that stuff. What we could possibly do, and to be honest, I've never actually attempted this, but I have. Uh, what we could do is change our MAC address of our Kali Linux machine to one of the MAC addresses of the Wi-Fi that we are scanning. Okay, um, and you know possibly it would automatically allow us into their network, but again I haven't tested that theory out. What I do know though is that we want to find the BSS ID or the MAC address of who we're wanting to target okay now ESSID is what they've named their their Wi-Fi network uh, or their router whatever you know so um, what we're trying to figure out is we want to be fairly close within range because if we're not we're gonna have a really hard and a really long time trying to connect and authenticate ourselves into that Wi-Fi network. Um, it's <laughs> the the much further away you are, the much worse it gets. And believe me, I've, I've ran this program for days trying to connect because I never understood. Now, that's why I want to teach each of you. So your power, PWR here, this is going to be highly important. This is how close you are to that Wi-Fi network that you are trying to target. Now, if I were to get up and walk around my house, you guys would see an increase or decrease of power. An increase, meaning going down the chain, so negative, let's say negative 50 changes to negative 60, means I am getting further away from that target Wi-Fi network or that target router. If it decreases, so assume that negative 20 goes down to negative 10, bingo, we are getting really hot instead of cold, okay, if we're playing that game. Um, that is a good sign. The less power or the less number, the less negative number, the better chance we have and the stronger connection we have to de-authenticating their password 
and um, you know any that that network. Okay. Now, going over to our encryption. Encryption is very important. Okay, it is probably more important than anything else that I'm going to show each of you. The encryption being WPA2, we got open network, which we really wouldn't even have to hack. And then there's also another one, it's called WEP, uh, WEP. Um, there's also just simply WPA, but that's it's fairly uncommon in this case anyways. Um, these are going to be WPA2 is fairly difficult to uh, attack and open networks I, again you really don't even have to attack them um, it's more just go ahead and connect and you're good to go uh, you know WPA2 is a very difficult one to attack we're gonna have to use multiple different um, word lists brute forcing all kinds of things and the worst thing is is most standard um, Wi-Fi networks that are at least within houses and high-end corporate corporations and companies are going to use WPA2 now it's not impossible by any means at all um, <laughs> you can actually you know you can crack them but okay so we get the idea of that and then the cipher CCMP uh, now I'm not going to attempt to tell each of you something that I don't know but if I'm not mistaken this is some sort of Caesar cipher CC and the MP I'm not sure but again I don't know CCMP that's something I would actually have to Google um, Google is sometimes the best friend of a hacker or penetration tester uh, so not sure of that cipher but anyways the next thing is is what channel are is that device running on now we can see here CH is our channel by the way um, we can see that a lot of them are running on channel 11 which most of them would then be connected to one uh, one specific router so you can have subnets or um, private networks, hidden networks, etc. Okay, this one is running on channel 6, 11, 11, 11, 1, um, and that's about all the channels that we're seeing at the moment. So, uh, you know, that's what we do. Uh, in order to stop this, we hit Control C, and it's just going to pause everything. Everything's still relevant, but it's just paused and not continuously switching like each of you seen. So what we do is we grab the MAC address and we will go on into part two, but that's coming up here um, in the next video, which I will probably make almost immediately after this one. Okay, and beacons, I'm not exactly sure what they do, but um, they're not exactly important in terms of uh, do we need to use them for our next stage of the attack? Uh, no. The thing that we are going to need is our BSSID and our channel. That is the two things that we're going to need for the next stage. Then, once we start sending and retrieving, hopefully retrieving packets, uh, which will establish a handshake, um, we're going to have to look at our BSS ID, our station, and our channel. All right, but I'll show you guys that in the next video. So, guys, I know this was a little bit longer, but again, I wanted to go into some detail get each of you familiar with the process of what we are doing so right now this what you're seeing on my screen is we're just scanning for what can we tap into how far away is it what's the MAC address what's the name of the network etc then in the next video in part two we're actually going to <coughs> excuse me come into contact with that router right now we're not actually even contacting any um, of the routers or anything like that okay so 
guys, thank you for watching. Please do subscribe. And also, in the description, I will put the uh, line of code that I used in order to get this up. Okay, starting from the monitor mode down into our actual error dump uh, scanning mode. And then uh, also, too, I have come out with a Twitter. Be sure to follow me on Twitter. Uh, there's going to be a lot of interesting stuff on that Twitter, including challenges um, of cracking codes, uh, you know, building things, anything related to basically hacking security and information technology. So, guys, InfoSec Operator here. Thank you for watching. See you in part two.